The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. All right. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, my name is uh, Father Stephen Gravy. I'm a pastor down uh, just south of Nebraska City um, in Paul, Nebraska, although it's actually like four miles outside of it. So I, I literally have one of those uh, cathedral uh, in the plains, so to speak, so surrounded by uh, cornfields. And so um, anyways, it's, it's a good to be here. Um, I gave a retreat last year to seminarians, and so this is a little bit different of a crowd. And so, just out of curiosity, so I, this is uh, I, this is now my seventh year as a priest. I, I've been in Hastings, uh, then uh, St. Joe's in Lincoln, um, and now my current assignment uh, in Attached to Lords. Uh, just a show of hands, has anyone been at any of those places before and kind of knew me a little bit? Because I, I, I see some familiar faces. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, awesome. Well, good. I'm glad I, I didn't scare you away. But for everyone else, just uh, I'm not doing this to, to brag or anything, but uh, my middle assignment was the largest parish in the diocese. So, I mean, this, there could have been a lot more. So it's, you can take that with whatever way you want to. So, uh, and again, uh, welcome to uh, the Retreat Center. So if, if you've never been here, it's a very simple place, but a beautiful place um, and just a, a, a great place to, to get away. And so... Um, just a, a little bit about uh, my vocation, um, because that is going to tie in to uh, the theme of the retreat. And so this retreat is entitled, um, you know, Inner Healing. And so uh, to kind of share a little bit about uh, my journey, I, th I think we'll maybe uh, understand uh, where, where we're going and, and why we're doing this. And so, as I mentioned, I've um, been a priest for seven years now, so I was ordained in uh, 2015, so a class of eight. It was a a great blessing, and um, went to Pius here, uh, the high school in, in town, actually Catholic high school my whole life, or Catholic school my whole life, then the Catholic high school. I uh, spent a year uh, of college at Franciscan in Steubenville, Ohio, and specifically went out there to discern priesthood, and obviously God uh, called me because here I am. And so after about a year, uh, I ended up going to seminary and was ordained in uh, 2015, and so I kind of mentioned uh, all of the places I've already been, but uh, it was in the in the midst of that. So, part of one of the biggest struggles for me, uh, one of the things that uh, I really has ha had hesitancy about um, entering the seminary and studying to be a priest was I knew that uh, in our diocese uh, I would have to be a high school teacher. Um, so I, I know we have some people from uh, not the Diocese of Lincoln here, and we're glad you're here. Uh, one of the great traditions uh, of our diocese is if you're a new priest, you're going to go and teach theology class, and you're going to do it uh, four days a week. And then, you know, you have one day uh, off, uh, you get a sub for that day. But uh, for me, I was like, this is going to be awful. Um, I do not, I, I, I did like a little inventory uh, in high school here, and I have to be kind because I do have someone that knew me in high school very well here, um, but I did an inventory for uh, what I want to be, well, like what it said you should be when you grow up, and I scored um, a five out of a hundred for teaching, okay, and that is like primarily the thing that I do, uh, and so God has such a funny sense of humor, but so I, I, I knew this um, going into, uh, you know, priesthood that that's something I would do. And so uh, my first assignment, Hastings, began uh, teaching there. And uh, sure enough, if you go into something thinking this is going to be miserable, I'm going to hate it. Well, that might actually come true. Right. Uh, and so that was that was kind of the case for me. Um, and it was it was it was not not fun every time. And, and I, I noticed like it just there was this tension. Right. Uh, and uh, for me my own background, it was, uh, I would struggle being anxious about, you know, how are these kids going to receive me? Um, 
disciplining, and some of that's just new. You know, I, we don't obviously have a family, but I'm sure uh, if you have your own families, just the difficulty and having tension with, with teenagers and that first time it happens and, you know, uh, caring how they're going to receive that, right? And so I'm, I'm very much human uh, and had these same struggles. And so uh, in the classroom, being able to, to discipline and not necessarily care how it's being received, that was a struggle for me, right? Uh, and so it kind of manifested. It's the, the worst one was uh, I, I struggled sleeping. And so I had like legitimate insomnia. Um, and uh, I would come to school and I remember some of the, the faculty were like, are you, like, are you okay, Father? I was just really, like, really tired. We're talking you know, a couple hours of sleep every night, multiple nights in a row. And uh, I mean, that'll, that'll take its toll, right? Uh, so this is going on. Um, and there was such a blessing too. Uh, we had a great priest, uh, Father Goodwin, um, he came to one of our kind of priest days, and, and he just talked about uh, this retreat that he had been on down in Florida, um, and that they were able to pray about uh, the root of some of his own issues, and it just related with me, like, right, anxiety, struggling with how I'm being uh, perceived, etc. And I remember listening to this, I'm like, this is, this is something uh, that I need to do. Uh, it just resonated with my heart. And so anyways, um, went off and didn't think of it, but it, it, it's, it sat with me. Um, and I remember the, the breaking point for me, and this is how God does it. He, he breaks us. We're, we're to a point where we're like, all right, God, I, I have nothing left. It has to be you. And so my breaking point, uh, another sleepless night, I think it was like 1.30 in the morning or something, and I was down in, in the rectory and not sleeping again. And I'm like, I've had it. This is, I can't do this anymore. So Popped open my email and just emailed Father Chris uh, and saying, hey, I remember you gave this, this sharing about the graces of this retreat you went on down in Tallahassee with Dr. Bob Schutz, and you talked about the book Be Healed. Um, can, you, like, can you explain that? I, I, you know, and I, I didn't quite have the, I don't think I remember the book or uh, the retreat. And so, so kind, he emailed me back, told me about, about all of that, ordered the book, read it, um, and then was convinced, like, I, I need to be down in this retreat. And so that summer, uh, I went off to uh, Tallahassee uh, and had the opportunity. So uh, for those, has anyone ever gone to a conference, by the way, just to show hands uh, for one, one of them? Okay, great. Yeah. So you're, some of this, you'll, you'll kind of know then. Um, I went down and th they, ha they have conferences for, for lay people. They're over their weekend and uh, they're big things and uh, there's a lot going on. They, they do some teaching um, and then you have just a, a little time uh, for, for some prayer. Uh, for the priest one, though, they give us like a whole five days. And that's really the intention. Uh, it's their mission. It's part of their team. It's like they want to renew priests because they feel like, hey, if we can renew priests and heal them, they can go out and do the ministry um, that we do. And so this is a fruit of that. Uh, so if you've been to a conference and you wish like, oh, I wish I would have had more time for prayer. Well, it's because they spend their time with priests uh, and then the priests go out uh, and then their mind do that. And so I had the opportunity then that summer to just spend uh, a week down with them uh, and had just two really beautiful uh, prayer sessions on healing. And you know, I'll, I'll kind of share more of that, but it got to the root of like, why am I anxious in the classroom? Well, it probably goes back to how your own high school was, you know? And so praying on that um, and just letting God love me in places that uh, I didn't want him to see. And so that's, uh, I think that's just a, a great summation. And if you're not familiar with the book or Dr. Bob, I'm, I'm going to get into it a little bit uh, tomorrow and kind of explain it. So kind of if you're coming totally, you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, it'll, it'll be a little more clear. Um, but the way I, I've come to know um, the healing love of God uh, is that God doesn't just want to love the best parts of us. Uh, he also wants to love the parts that we try to hide from him. Right? Uh, he's not interested in just the, you know, the masked version that we present to him. And I, I see this so often, too, just being a priest and people come up and they have their, like, oh, Father, and, you know, they're very, very kind in this mass, uh, after mass uh, persona. But what I love is when, after, and, and it's normal and necessary and good, I'm not putting that down, but uh, when I get to know someone long enough uh, to be able to walk with them uh, through the valleys, uh, and then able to minister in those places because that's it's really where they need the priest um, and seeing that. And I think that's just a sharing in a part of my priesthood um, being configured to Christ is just a sharing in his heart. Like my heart breaks for people when their heart, heart, hearts break. 
Um, and so to think like, yeah, our Lord, his heart breaks as well. Uh, and I, I have a, a gift to be able to, to share in that. And so that's just what I've seen is like, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I love um, ministering to people and, uh, and being with them after Mass, but I love even more going to their homes when they're really in need um, and being able to bring God's love for them then. All right, so that's just a little bit of back, a little bit background um, where we're going. Uh, and so just uh, I want to give you uh, like a question here and then flush out the retreat. And so that's the, the main part. But um, uh, one of the questions that uh, Dr. Bob, he um, kind of offered on our retreat in, in the book Be Healed, um, he offered this question like, why is it that we uh, commit the same sin over and over again? Um, like continuously, it, it seems like if you go to confession, um, at least me, just confessing the same things, like what's going on here? Uh, why doesn't there seem to be uh, any change, okay? And so I want to propose to you uh, uh, two things, uh, and then we'll bring this back to healing. Um, one can simply be um, a lack of an, like an interior disposition. And so what I mean by this is the people who just go to confession and they make no effort at all to amend their life, um, to change the behaviors. Um, they treat confession as if it was like magic uh, and you know something would happen to them and, and they wouldn't have to do anything. Uh, no, there's a cooperation, right? Grace builds upon nature. And so uh, and I've got, this is, this is me showing how my millennial side, I'm gonna use my phone for a quote. Um, so uh, the, the papal preacher, uh, he preaches to the, the Pope. Um, this is Father Canta La Mesa. This is what he said. The sacraments are not magic rites that are act mechanically without people's knowledge or cooperation. Uh, the fruit of the sacrament depends wholly upon divine grace. However, this divine grace does not act without the yes, the consent and affirmation of the person. Okay? And so the, the catechism calls when we treat the sacraments like this, it, making them superstitious. Right? And uh, it's unfortunate. I, I see a lot in the world today and in the church, just superstitious receptions of the Eucharist or confirmation, thinking it'll be magic. Um, no, God isn't calling you to those things per se, but it's calling you to relationship with him, right? Uh, and so to view all things in light of that. And so sometimes if we don't uh, have a, a, an interior disposition to really like amend our life, right, that can be a barrier to why we're committing the same sin over and over again, okay? Well, that's just one. And my sense as I was praying before Mass is uh, for most of us here on the retreat, I would imagine, uh, it might be the second thing. Like, we're here on a retreat. We love God. We're, we're giving him a weekend, and so to bless him, right? Uh, so we probably don't want sin in our life. Like, and maybe in past life, in our past we have, but um, an another reason then that we commit the same sin over and over again um, is that there's some area in our life where uh, we're, we're the wall to defend ourselves uh, is lowered. Um, there's sort of a, a, a breach, so to speak, in our defenses. And so the, the enemy, and St. Ignatius of Loyola talks about this, he finds the place where we're weak and he attacks and he attacks and he attacks until it is fixed. And so why do we con commit the same sin over and over again? Well, it's because that spot is open and the devil keeps on going time and time and time again. And so, if we do have a disposition not to sin, um, one of the things that we can do then would be to look at uh, our, our, our defenses, our, the walls, our, our soul, our interior, um, and see where are we weak? Uh, and then, okay, that's, that's probably related to my sin. And so we'll, we'll kind of get in, uh, into, into this, but, um, uh, but Dr. Bob uses this great example. Uh, he said if we're... Um, going to confession uh, and committing the same sin over and over again without looking interiorly, without looking at the parts of our heart and soul and past that need healing, um, it would be like trying to eliminate uh, an apple tree by plucking off the apples, okay? So you go and there's this apple tree and you just, you pluck off all of the apples, right? Um, you, have you eliminated the apple tree? No. What are the apples going to do? They're, they're going to grow back. Um, and so then you have to go to confession again and remove more apples and then, okay, great, they're gone, but then they come back. So if you really want to uh, get rid of the apples uh, once and for all, you get down to the root, right? Uh, and eliminate it right then and there. Chop it down so it can't grow back at all. And so that's, uh, that's what this retreat 
uh, I pray is, is going to be an opportunity for you all um, to find out the, the, the roots of our sin um, and then to let Jesus in, all right? just to allow him to love you because what the evil one does is right where there's uh, the root of our sin is often shame and so we want to hide that, right? That's, that's, so we put a mask and so no, like to allow Jesus to heal that, um, to not have to, you know, pluck apples our whole lives. Uh, let's 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 let Jesus in. All right. And so it, th- this retreat is maybe going to uh, press you in a way I don't, if you you weren't expecting. Um, but just the the disposition then to have is um, just this humility and this trust. Right. So the humility to say, all right, I'm going to allow Jesus to love me in this place of shame, um, and then this trust in in the goodness of God the Father. Right. He is so good. Um, and just think um, of the person who has shown you. Uh, Christ-like love the most, right? And that's like a good, uh, as we go into this retreat, just a good metaphor uh, for uh, the love that, that God has for all of you. Uh, and I, I just love that. Oftentimes when, you know, when, I, when I mess up, and it's many times uh, a day, um, I'm doing my examination of conscience at night, and I'll think, um, I'll think of someone who's particularly kind, uh, and I'm like, all right, yeah, that was, that was God loving me in that moment. Uh, and it's, it's so helpful, like just to just think of people who love us um, in profound ways. And, and that's, that's a, an image, a mirror of, of God's love for us, okay? So uh, tonight, like I said, uh, tomorrow at our conference, we're going to walk, up, walk uh, in depth into some of this. Um, and then I'll, I'll explain uh, a little bit more um, about our prayer sessions that we'll have. But uh, just in general for the retreat, just some things to consider. Um, so part of, like, if you think of what a retreat is, it's we're retreating from battle, um, but we're not giving up the war. We're just, I, I need a little break. Um, and so even to think of our, our you know, our, our, our life uh, in Christ and this walls being lowered and breaches being attacked, um, let's retreat, let's be quiet, um, and let's focus and kind of re-energize uh, and get, get ourselves back together before we go out uh, into the battlefield, so to speak. And so a couple things for those who maybe haven't retreated or um, if it's been a while, if this is a new retreat, um, just a couple of things. One, uh, the, the gift of silence. And so I don't think I, if you have big families, I probably don't need to tell you that this is a gift. Uh, and so it's, it's short, this retreat um, will be done on, on Sunday. And so um, I, I am gonna just uh, invite you into to, to enter into that. It's not something our world likes. It wants to keep us distracted, um, surface level things, and then we don't, so we don't ever reflect uh, and go deep. And so part of doing an inner healing retreat is just having an atmosphere uh, of silence that will foster uh, contemplation and, 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 and reflection. Uh, and so just invite you to, to share in that. And, um, and then the more silence in our life, you'll also be able to hear God more clearly. And, th- and that's the whole purpose. It's like we're going to have prayer teams here, and um, it's not anything we do. It's, it's what God is going to do. And so silence will help cultivate the ability to hear uh, God's voice. And so just uh, to kind of recommend that for you. Uh, other thing is uh, s- sleep. So rest is very good. Uh, physical rest, uh, maybe just sitting here in chapel and restful prayer. I uh, want to invite you to do that. Um, my, my favorite movie, by the way, is uh, Lord of the Rings. And I love when the hobbits get to Treebeard, the end, and Treebeard just says, oh, sleep, rest, you know, rest hobbits, rest the little hobbits. And then they just, all right, and then they're good. And then they go and they can fight the next battle. And so for us, just, just some rest. So good. We need it. Um, life is hard. Uh, and so just be kind to yourself. Take, take advantage of, of this. And then the, the last little bit, uh, silence, rest would be, uh, would be prayer. Right, that's that's going to be, uh, I think, the key. Um, in so many ways, there's in the back as you entered, we had uh, available to you uh, a um, an outline of kind of the the retreat, what's going on, and the times and everything, a schedule, and then also with it were uh, scripture meditations. And so this retreat is a little different than maybe some other retreats uh, that if you've been on one, is there's a little more time for for prayer. Um, and so I would recommend uh, getting that, that, that scripture guide. And it just had some, has some scriptures that you can look at and read and, uh, and just be led by the Lord uh, to pray ever. And so definitely that's one way. And we're, we're praying right now at Mass, of course. Uh, we'll have uh, exposition uh, tomorrow from like 1, 1 1.30 to, to 9 p.m. Uh, after Mass, uh, and then morning, evening, and night prayer, 
uh, we'll, we'll pray like a little liturgy of the hours. I'll, I'll explain that later, but uh, liturgical prayer. Um, we'll have a, we just did a rosary. We'll, we'll have that. Uh, I, when I'm here, I love doing a, a walking rosary. If you do multiple, you know, you have plenty of time and go up to the convent. You can walk around. Maybe you'll want to go do a section and just pray a rosary. And then you have another couple miles to just walk. And that's beautiful. I think it should be kind of pleasant. I, I think weather, I'm not, don't quote me on that, but um, definitely better than it was last year and, and this time of year. Um, and then the last bit for prayer is just those uh, inner healing prayer sessions that we'll have. And so kind of a unique part of this retreat is having the opportunity to um, pray with two people from a true retreat, uh, from a prayer team um, for an hour, uh, an hour plus, I think, um, and just seeing what God wants to do. And so part of being vulnerable is I'm willing to share, and that requires an act of faith. Um, and I've been blessed by that, and so I hope um, to, with, with Jesus to, to, that you guys uh, receive that blessing as well.